Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our physics engine. Uh, today's going to be kind of an interesting video for me uh, because we have a lot of little things that I would like to implement. And we're rapidly approaching a point in our engine where uh, performance is going to become a huge consideration. And when I think performance in a physics engine, I start thinking of the broad phase. So as far as I'm aware, in uh, most physics engines, they implement what's known as a broad phase and then a narrow phase for collision detection. And the broad phase is where we just generally sort the objects into groups based on where they are in the world. And then once we have them sorted in these little groups, and then we move this list of smaller groups into the narrow phase, and the narrow phase will actually resolve the collisions based on where they are in the groups. What having a broad phase does is it, is it drastically reduces the amount of checks we have to do, or the number of loops that we have to do. And so as far as today is concerned, what we're basically going to end up with is I'm going to place a ground uh, static body, and then I want to be able to place objects in the world, and then have them fall, accelerating with gravity, and then interact not only with the static ground, but with each other, and uh, start stacking up as well. And especially when objects start stacking like that, performance becomes a big consideration because um, we're going to have lots of bodies that are close together. And so there's going to be a lot of intersections happening that have to be resolved. And the broad phase will help us with performance in that regard. Uh, and so you can see here is where we left off with our engine. I've kind of got it running right now. We have the static bodies, everything, all the all of our collision detection seems to be working. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to um, go back into our collisions class and I'm going to make some overloads for our, our intersect circle polygon and our uh, intersect polygons methods. All right. There is an optimization I can make to these functions. Here is our intersect circle polygons method. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make an overloaded version of this that's going to have an extra field. Okay, so here is the new one. And what I want to do is, um, you can see we're passing in the circle center and the circle radius, and we're passing in the vertices. Well, down here, um, we're doing this function where we, uh, we're finding the arithmetic mean. And the idea behind that function is that we want to find the center of the polygon. Well, in reality, our bodies already know the center of the polygon. So the center of the polygon is actually the position of our body. This is not something I have to calculate in this loop if, if I can just pass it into the function. So right here on the intersect circle polygon function, I'm going to add an, an extra field, and I'm going to pass in a vector that is the center. I'm going to call this the polygon center. And this way, if I just pass in the body center as the polygon center, I don't have to do this calculation down here where I'm finding the arithmetic mean as the center. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then I have the polygon center ready to go. Okay, so just a small optimization. And then same thing with our, uh, let me scroll down here. Same thing with our intersect polygons method. Okay, so here's our intersect polygons. I'm going to copy this one as well. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to make an overloaded version. So I'm just copying it. I'm pasting it back in. So we have two versions here. One of them just takes the vertices like this, but the other one, I'm going to pass in the actual centers. So there will be the center of uh, polygon A and the vertices of polygon A, and then let's also pass in the center of polygon B. So now I'm passing in the centers here. Uh, let's scroll down, and right here we're calculating those centers. We don't need to do that anymore since we're just passing those in. So just a little optimization to make it so we don't have to do those loops. And since we're doing that, let's go back into our collision. Actually, this is our flat world. And we're going to scroll down to where the um, collision function is happening. All right, so here's where we collide. Um, uh, we're colliding a box with a box. And I'm going to use the overloaded function. Let's pass in the body A position. And that'll just be the center of body A. And then same thing for body B. We're going to pass in uh, the body B position. Actually, I'm going to drop some of these down to the next line so we can see them a little bit easier. Okay, there we go. So we pass in the position, which we're using for the center, and then the vertices, and same thing for body B. All right, so let's scroll down here. Okay, so now we have the intersect circle polygons. Uh, so body B is the circle, and then body A is the polygon. 
So let's go ahead and pass in the center of body A, which is just the position. And then I'm going to just drop these fields down so we can see them a little bit easier. OK, and then finally, we have uh, body A as a circle and body B as a box. And we're going to do the same thing here. So body A is good. That's just a circle. Um, let's drop these fields down so I can see them. And then we need to pass in the center of body B, which is just the position of body B. And the last one we have is just the circle circle intersection. And that one is already good to go. OK, so that's just a little optimization there. Should make things run just a little bit more efficiently. And I'm just going to drop these fields down like that there. OK. All right, so now let's go back to our game class. I'm basically uh, inside the game class. I'm going to go up to the initialization function. OK, here's where we initialize our code. And I'm basically going to get rid of all of this code here. So what we were doing before is we were actually um, creating a bunch of random bodies. And we're going to get rid of all of that. So we're not going to create any of the random bodies anymore. Um, let's see. So I'm going to get, get rid of that loop there. And so our initialization function is a lot more simple. Um, OK, I'm going to get rid of the body count right there. Now the padding I'm going to leave in there, but I'm going to make the padding 10%. And also our colors. I need to make changes to these colors arrays. So let's go back up here. So instead of having color arrays, I'm going to have color lists. So let's make this a list of colors. OK, and let's just call it, we'll just leave that called colors. And then I want to have, have a list as well of the outline colors. All I did was change those arrays to lists because I want to be able to add and remove these colors. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to start adding bodies to the scene. And then as we add a body to the scene, I'm going to add a color to the scene that will represent what that body needs to look like. OK, so let me scroll down here. All right, these colors are now going to be lists of colors. So I'll just change those real quick. All right, I'm just going to move this stuff a little bit. OK, there we go. OK, so we have our colors. We have our world. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and add the ground uh, body. And the ground body is just going to be a box that sits kind of towards the lower end of the scene. OK, so let's create a box body. Now the width, OK, so that's going to be, um, that's going to be the viewable width minus the padding. OK, so I'm going to take the. Uh, I'm going to take the right minus the left. Okay, that'll be the width, but I'm also going to subtract uh, the padding times two, and uh, because I want to have 10% um, padding on each side, and so that'll give me 10% padding on each side. Now the height's just going to be a constant, and I think I'm just going to make that. So to, this is how many meters I want to make the height. So let's start with three or four. Maybe let's start with three meters and just see what that looks like. Uh, the position. So this will also be a constant. So the position will be at the x position will be 0. And we're talking about the center of this body. So where is the center of this body going to be? So the center of the x is going to be 0. And then we're going to go down 10 meters. OK, uh, density, really, um, for our box body, density doesn't really matter. Since this is going to be static, I'm just going to put 1 in there. That can be pretty much anything. But it needs to be within the bounds of density. Otherwise, it'll give us an error. So I'm just going to put 1. But this is a static object. Since it's not going to move, it's going to be immovable. Restitution, we'll just give it a value of 0.5 to start. And we can go back and change that if we need to. Then let's pass out our, uh, this is going to be a ground body. OK, and then we'll pass out a string that's the error message if uh, we did something wrong. All right, and let me just move some of these fields down to the next line so we can read them a little bit better. And then let's check to see if um, if our function succeeded. So if it did not succeed, we're going to throw an error. And we'll just pass in the uh, string error message. Now that we have our ground body, let's add it to the world. OK, and I think that'll do. Oh, actually, um, we need to do one more thing. We need to tell it what the color of our ground is going to be. So the outline, uh, the outline colors is just going to be white. And then the actual color of the body, um, I'm just going to make it a dark green. OK, so we created the ground body, um, and we've created colors for it and added those to the list. And so every time we add a body to our world, we need to add colors to the list here. So they're going to be um, together, they're going to be linked together. All right, so um, there's our bodies. Let's go down here. The other thing is, uh, here is our update function. And right here, we are, uh, we're, we're applying force to the, to the zero body or to the first body in the list so we can um, move things around. But we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to use gravity to apply force. 
So I'm just going to um, get rid of all of this code right here for now. And I'm not going to delete it, but I am going to make sure it doesn't compile. So we're not actually going to be able to apply forces to any of the bodies right now. Uh, the world steps. I'm going to get rid of this wrap screen function because uh, what I'm going to do is if the bodies fall off the end of the world, so we're going to apply gravity, and if the bodies fall off below um, the viewable screen, I'm just going to get rid of them, and we'll have code for that here in a second. And then inside our draw function, I don't think anything in the draw function is going to change. It's going to draw whatever I just put in the world. And so let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. Uh, perfect. Oh, okay, so it's not the right color. Did I, 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 I said dark green, but I probably wrote dark gray. Yeah. <laughs> so let's change that. So this should be dark green for the color. All right, what does that look like? Perfect. Okay, so there's our ground body. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to click on the scene and add bodies and have them fall. So now let's go ahead and apply um, acceleration due to gravity to our bodies. So back inside our body class, we have, uh, let's scroll up to where we have the step. And I'm going to get rid of this acceleration here. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Right now, the only thing that's going to be working on the objects is um, gravity. So I'm going to tell it that the linear velocity is going to be incremented by gravity. And that's going to be on a per time basis. So we'll put that there. And then I'm actually going to pass in gravity that we can use just like that. OK. Um, and actually, while I'm here, I'm looking at this. I don't want this step to be, um, I don't want this step function to be public. I want uh, only the engine to be able to use a step function. So I'm going to make this internal. So uh, that's going to be internal. We're going to increment the velocity by the acceleration due to gravity over time and then increment the position. So let's go back now to um, our world class. Let's take a look at our, our stepping function. Here's where we step through our objects. We're going, to, uh, we're going to add gravity to our function. And I think we already defined gravity up here. Yeah, so inside our flat world, gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, but this actually needs to be a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Eventually, I'm going to add a function that will allow you to adjust gravity to whatever you want to be. Uh, but right now, we're just going to use gravity as uh, straight down, and it's going to be the gravity that is uh, felt on Earth. But technically, gravity could be any direction you wanted, and uh, pretty much whatever velocity now, you probably should keep gravity within a certain bounds, and maybe we'll have a max and minimum magnitude for gravity that we want to check for eventually. I can add something up here to do that. But uh, that'll be good for now. And so now I'm back in the game class. In our update function, what I want to do is I want to be able to click with the mouse into the world and then add either a box or a circle, depending on which uh, mouse button I've clicked. So the flat library has a mouse class, and it's a mouse singleton that allows me to get mouse clicks. I'm going to check to see if the left mouse button is clicked. Um, we're going to add a box. If the right mouse button is clicked, then we're going to add a circle. And so let's go ahead and write the function for that. So if the left, if the left mouse button is clicked, let's go ahead and, and create a box body. And uh, for the width and the height, actually, I want to make the width and the height random. Uh, I want them to be just kind of random bo bodies that well, I can drop into the scene. Uh, let's go ahead and make a width and a height. Okay, and I'll just use the random helper uh, to get some random values. Uh, so uh, I pretty much want the minimum to be, let's say the minimum is half of a meter, and the maximum would be two meters. And same thing for the height. Okay, let's pass in our width and a height. Uh, the position is going to be wherever the mouse clicked. Okay, and we need to figure out what that is. Um, so let's go ahead and get the mouse position. So I have a function inside of our mouse class that will give us the world position. Um, so you can see I've got a mouse window position, but I also have a mouse world position. So we're going to get the mouse world position. And let's just pass in the fields here. And this function actually returns a, uh, a vector2, which is a mono game struct for uh, vector. So we're going to convert this to a flat vector so we can use it in our world. So um, let's get a flat vector out of this. Uh, I'm going to call this the mouse world position. And we're going to use the uh, flat converter to convert this to a, uh, oh, and actually I don't have that function yet. So let's go back to our flat converter. All right, so we have a function that will convert from a flat vector to a vector 2. But I want one that will also do the opposite. So I'm going to copy this function. And uh, let's tell it we want to convert to a flat vector. 
And we're just going to switch these fields. Uh, so this vector 2 is going to go over here. And this flat vector is going to be the return of the function. And we're just going to return a new flat vector. So now we can convert from a, from a vector to a, a, a mono game vector 2 to a flat vector. Let's go back to our game class here. Uh, let's convert to a flat vector. And then we'll just pass in the results of our uh, get mouse world position. Okay, and I'm going to drop that down here. Okay, so now we've got the world position as a flat vector. We're going to pass that in as uh, where we want the body to start. Uh, density, um, let's just make it really simple for now. I'm going to make them all one or two. Uh, let's just make it, well, let's make it two for now and see what that looks like. Static is always going to be false for these objects. Restitution, we'll just do 0.6 or maybe 0.5. We'll do 0.6. And then let's pass out the flat body as our result and our error message. And then again, if this failed, let's just go ahead and throw an exception that has our error message. Okay, now if we've gotten to this point, let's go ahead and add. So we need to add the body to our world, and then we also need to add colors for this body. And so let's uh, tell the world class that we want to add a body, and that'll just be the body we created just now. And then also for the colors list, uh, we need to add some colors. So this is going to be a random color. And then the outline color, I'm just always going to make this white for now. We can change that later. So that should add a random box to our scene. And you know what? Let's go ahead and run that uh, and see what happens. And uh, okay. And you saw the ground body, it started to fall. And that's a good sign because that means that gravity is being applied, but it's a static object. So we need to go back to our flat body class. And in this step, uh, let's see, before we start doing any of this velocity and updating stuff, I'm just going to check to see if it's static. So if this body is static, we're just going to return. Okay, so that means we're not going to do any of this um, acceleration or rotation or anything like that. It's just going to be fixed wherever it is. Uh, okay, so let's run that again and see where we are. Okay, so we have our static body there. I'm going to left click somewhere on the scene. Perfect. Okay, and that actually looks really good. That is exactly what I was hoping would happen. And you can see they're interacting with each other and they're kind of stacking up right now. <laughs> uh, it looks, looks really good. Some of them look like they're a little bit too small though. So maybe I'm going to change that 0.5. I'd like them to be a little bit bigger. So uh, let's go back to our game class. Um, Okay, so here's where we create the width and the height. I think 0.5 is a little too small. I'm going to make these between 1 and 2. So, perfect. There's where we add the bodies, uh, or our box bodies. Let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this, and let's just add our circle bodies now as well. Okay, so we're going to get the mouse position again. Instead of creating a box body, we're going to make a circle body. Uh, we don't have a width and height, but we need a radius. And I'm going to get rid of this, uh, this code here. I'm going to get a radius. I'm going to make this radius random as well. So uh, let's use the random helper. Let's get a random value. So the minimum, uh, let's see. I think the minimum will just make one or maybe. Uh, so I'm going to make the minimum radius like uh, 1.25 and the maximum two maybe. Oops, and I picked random color. I don't want I want random. Let's see, I want this to be a random single. Okay, so now if I right click, I should place circles, and let's just see what that looks like. <laughs> there they are, and that looks really good. Actually, it's it looks like it's working perfectly. <laughs> the circles are a little bigger than I want them to be, so <laughs> let me uh, let me go back, and uh, so I'm gonna make the minimum maybe 0.5 on the radius, and the maximum will be one, or maybe 1.25. Let's just uh, let's try that. <laughs> uh, looks good. Looks really good. Okay, so um, now they're a little bit too small. So uh, let's try 0. 0.75 and then point, uh, 1.5 on the largest, maybe. Okay, and I can actually add boxes as well. Okay, so that looks really good. Um, 
everything looks like it's uh, acting appropriately, at least according to the physics that we've defined so far. And you can see they just kind of slide off the edge. That's because there is no friction right now. But um, everything does stack up correctly, and it looks like it's working okay. And you can see as I start stacking more and more bodies, um, I can zoom in here, and uh, we're starting to see some, some issues with accuracy uh, because there's so many bodies stacked right here uh, that they're starting to, to penetrate, and you can see they're starting to sink. Um, but this is as far as I want to get in this video. And also the other issue we're running into, as the objects fall off the edge, they're just, they just continue falling pretty much indefinitely. So uh, I need to find a way to actually remove the bodies that have fallen too far. And so next time I, uh, we're going to deal with this issue of um, accuracy, where the bodies start to sink into each other, especially when you start stacking. And that's an issue that we're going to run into with stacking. Um, but uh, next time we'll figure out how to resolve that and also how to get rid of the bodies as they fall. And we're going to take the next step to preparing ourselves for the broad phase of collision detection and uh, really increasing our performance. But right now, that all looks really good. And uh, I'm happy with the way that looks. So there's our bodies reacting with the ground and also with gravity.